Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Mid-South Singles Ministry devotional on Friday, May the 13th. I'd like to read to everyone the theme scripture for our Mid-South Singles Ministry, and that comes out of Romans chapter 12, verse 2, and this is our theme for the year. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. My name is Tom Wong. It's my pleasure to kick us off tonight. I also have the privilege of serving in the singles ministry in the Memphis Church in Memphis, Tennessee, with my amazing co-leader, Malika Miller, who is not able to be with us tonight. Her uncle passed away last weekend, and Malika is at the wake and funeral this weekend. We have an exciting night planned for everyone. We will continue this theme of having our mind transform as we look into the perspective and hear from our brothers and sisters on being a single parent disciple. We really look forward to hearing from them and we'll have opportunities at the end of tonight to also ask questions. I'll now ask Ben Smith to pray for us and then we'll turn it over to Gloria in ways to continue tonight. Amen, let's go to God in prayer. Dear Lord, I come today, thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for just um, who you are and just what you continue to show us in our lives, Lord, and as we continue to deepen our relationship with you each and every day. Let us continue to do that and provide in us deeper love each and every day to grow in you, for you, and with you, um, Lord, as we grow with the brothers and sisters around us as well. Um, be with the speakers tonight as they just um, come vulnerably um, just with their hearts with their lives and just let us be open to just the feedback and just um, how, we, how we can support them in any way that we can. And we just love you ultimately and want to continue to show um, just you our um, obedience and let us connect. And I know these, um, I, I personally don't know how a single parent is like. And just, I can't wait for the perspectives of those single parents and how they are raising their kids to be just an, an amazing people and just um, to connect to God, connect to each other and to connect to the body of Christ. We love you so much, Lord. We say this in your son's Jesus name. Amen. All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Gloria Mwase. I am a member of the Mid-South Singles uh, Servants Group, uh, which includes several churches, um, starting with Nax Knoxville, um, Nashville, Memphis, Chattanooga, Huntsville, and um, the Tri-County Church, which I'm a part of in the Jackson, Mississippi area. And we are very excited to offer this devotional um, this evening. Um, as Tom mentioned, we're trying to uh, renew our minds and uh, refresh our, our spirits and uh, revive our body, the body of Christ, the family of God. Um, through the work that we're doing uh, this year as we try to serve all of you through the activities that we plan. And 
one of the uh, ideas that the servants group had was just to really try to connect with um, uh, you know, particular parts of the singles ministry that may not get as much attention as others, as well as to address some issues that may not get as much attention as others. And, and we think that single parents definitely uh, fits that bill, uh, single parent disciples. And so um, we're gonna have a, a, a great conversation uh, this evening about uh, single parents. And um, my theme is uh, fighting for God. It really uh, was a spirit-led suggestion by one of the sisters in our servants group who was just talking about her own experience um, being uh, the daughter of a single mother and, and just what that was like being raised by one and, and how um, important it is for single parents to fight for God for themselves and for them for their children. I thought that was such a great, um, you know, just reminder and encouragement of what our single brothers, single parent brothers and sisters are doing um, in in their walk. And so you will hear from um, several, uh, four different single parents, um, both moms and dads, um, and how they got to be single parents vary, and they'll tell you their story. But what they do have in common is that they have a great love for God. They have a great love for their children and a great desire to see their children know and love God. And they'll talk about some of the joys and challenges of walking as a single parent disciple um, and, and also talk about some ways that they're staying faithful and ways that we as the family of God can really help them and help their children um, as they're trying to help their children to draw closer to God. So um, I'd like to introduce you and, and they'll each uh, kind of tell their story, and then we'll have some time at the end for a discussion and maybe even some, um, you know, some questions for them and maybe some discussion with the whole group. Um, so we have Darnell Hill, who's with the uh, uh, Greater Huntsville Church, uh, Myra uh, Freire, who's with the Chattanooga Church of Christ, um, Jason Board, who's also with the Chattanooga Church of Christ, and Melinda Hart, who's with the Greater Nashville Church, and so they'll speak to us in that order. And uh, with, with nothing else to, to add, uh, let's get started. I'm um, going to turn it over to you, Darnell. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all. Such an honor um, to, to speak to y'all about this. Um, I'm more than grateful to talk to y'all about this. Um, so, you know, as... As Gloria mentioned, uh, my name is Darnell. I'm from the Greater Huntsville Church. Um, and um, yeah, <laughs> being, being a single parent has its challenges. It, it definitely has its challenges. Uh, but anyway, let me get back. Let me start from the beginning. You know, I became a single parent due to adultery. And I'm just going to be flat up, you know, flat out, blunt, honest, uh, and I made a bunch of mistakes during uh, about the second year of our marriage. Um, we got married young. I was about 20, uh, 20, 21 um, age range. Um, so as the man, though, you know, I put all the blame on me. Um, and I wish I had done a better job at leading her the way Christ wants me to lead her. Uh, but I, I, I keep I keep this scripture in my head also, which is uh, Philippians 3, uh, 13. Let me just turn to that real fast on this one of my favorite the Bible apps. So let me see Philippians. So um, in Philippians 3, 13, it just says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God had called me heavenward, heavenward in Christ Jesus. Um, so I try to keep that in my mind. You know, yes, it could be a struggle to think about the past and like, man, I wish I would have done that. I wish I would have done this, you know, but it's. It's uh, I've learned a lot, a lot through my mistakes, and I just keep pressing forward. Just keep pressing forward. Um, I did out of out of the marriage. I did. Um, God allowed me 
I should say, to have two amazing children out of it. And, and I'm so grateful to this day, y'all. Uh, my daughter, her name is Riley. Uh, she's seven years old. She just turned seven. And then my son is, his name is August. And he just turned five. Well, I'm sorry, he is five years old. Uh, he's actually about to be six here um, come July 3rd. But um, being a single parent, you know, like I said, it has its challenges. But when I think about it, I'm like, you know, life in general has its challenges. <laughs> you know, Jesus told us this life would be hard. And, uh, and I was thinking, I'm like, well, that makes sense. Of course it would be hard because we're not in heaven yet. <laughs> so... So this is this is this is where we're at at this at this state. So um, I had to make a lot of adjustments. I'm sorry, a lot of adjustments had to be made uh, due to the changes, you know, with the divorce and, and so on. Um, but we have a king that never changes, no matter what, you know. And that that brought me, if, if I could read it real quick, that brought me to Hebrews 13 verse eight, um, and then. Uh, a lot of y'all seen this scripture before, uh, but I'll just read it. Um, it just says, uh, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. And amen to that, y'all. Amen to that. Isn't that, isn't that encouraging? That's so encouraging. He's still the same from the day that, you know, we decided uh, to make Jesus Lord. He's still the same no matter what our, our, the situation is. So, um, so, you know, no matter how things change in our life for the worse or, or good, we know that God is good and only wants the best for us. And I'll just take us to one last scripture. And I almost know this is by heart because uh, it's just so encouraging. But uh, Jeremiah 29, uh, uh, 29, 11, um, uh, let me just turn to that real quick. Uh, Jeremiah, where is this on this? Okay, yeah. So Jeremiah 29, 11, it just says, um, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and, 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 uh, and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. And amen to that. Uh, God just wants the best for us. You know, he's not just sitting. He's not, I feel like at times, you know, I can get these negative thoughts. I'm like, well, God, uh, I guess I'm being, well, when things go wrong, you know, uh, this, when things go wrong, I feel like I'm being paid back for all the wrong that I've done. And that's not true. He wants the best for us. So, um, so just, I pray that that encourages y'all and y'all, um, you know, continue to strive forward, push forward, no matter what the situation is and forgetting what is behind. Um, so my name's Darnell and I am done speaking. Thank you, Darnell. Um, so my name is Myra Frere. And I'm a member of the C3 Christ Church. And just a little bit about my background. I grew up Baptist uh, thinking that I was a Christian. Um, but we all know that's not the case when we study the Bible um, and become disciples. Um, my dad was a single dad of five kids. So you can just imagine um, all the hard times that we went through and all the struggles and bad things that happened um, to us. Um, but I personally became a single parent. Um, I was very young and stupid. Um, I made some bad choices. I was irresponsible. Um, but a true blessing came from that. And I am truly blessed to have such an amazing daughter. Um, so my daughter's name is Aria, and she's 11. Um, and I became a disciple a few, few years after having her. Um, I was actually... When I had her, and I've been a single mom forever, uh, since she was born, actually. Um, so I think she was like four or five, maybe a little bit older. But um, for the first um, almost three years of her life, 
I was very depressed. Um, I never slept. I was, um, she cried for the first six months of her life. Um, she cried from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. I would rock around, massage her, take her to the doctor throughout the day and nothing was wrong. They said it was colic, um, the worst pain that a baby can feel when they're babies. And so I, when she slept throughout the day, I just watched her sleep, make sure she did not die because I was, you know, she was such a great blessing, the greatest thing that God has ever sent me. And so the doctors scare you with SIDS, um, which is, um, I think it's like an acronym for sudden, sudden infant death or something like that. And so they scare you with that. So I would just watch her breathe, make sure she's breathing. So I was not getting any sleep whatsoever. Um, and depression wasn't a thing in my family. And if you did, you kept it hush hush. You never mentioned it. Um, so, you know, my family thought I was going crazy. I didn't have that mental support. Um, financially, my dad helped me some um, with my daughter, um, but it was very hard. And I just, I just would cry for no reason. And I just felt sad all the time. And I further myself away from God. Um, but just, you know, I told myself something has to give. So I started praying. I, and it's amazing how God, you know, we're not fully committing to God, but he hears us um, and he has mercy on us. And so slowly I saw, saw I started to see changes in my life. Um, I did start going to a church named Church on the Hill, and it was actually on a hill. Um, and it was a non-denominational church, and it was, the pastor was amazing, um, but the congregation not so much welcoming. Uh, me and my daughter were the only Hispanics in the church. Um, there was a couple that reached out to us when we went to church, but the other people, it's like, you know, it, it's okay that they're here, but we don't want any part of them, is what I felt. Um, and the pastor constantly had to talk about racism, so you know, I just got to feel like, oh, there's something going on here. But ultimately, I went for God and to further my relationship with God. Um, but I just felt like something was missing. And, you know, um, so, and going back to sticking to the point of, you know, how I became a disciple. Um, so my sister is a school teacher. And so one of her colleagues at school um, or was another teacher, he was, he had been a disciple for a long time, so they kind of became good friends, and um, she eventually got baptized, and so um, I would go to church with her when she would go, or eventually started going to church with her, um, but it was, you know, our church, C3 met at one part of the building sometimes, sometimes they did community church, and so, you know, when my sister didn't go, I didn't know where they met. So, you know, and I wasn't really connected with anybody at the church quite yet. Um, and one year, um, one of the, it was New Year's Day and my dad and stepmom and um, little brother were out of town. So we went out to eat uh, with one of the sisters. Her name was Teresa and me and her just clicked. And, you know, one day I went to church and then she's like, why don't you come to church all the time? And I'm like, well, I just don't know where you guys meet every time. So she showed me the website. And even when my sister um, didn't come, I would go. Um, and so I started starting the Bible. And I remember the sister is like, have you read your Bible? And I'm like, uh, well, no. And so I just felt overwhelmed. So I stopped studying the Bible. Um, and then one day, and I still use the GPS to get to Chattanooga because I live in Dalton and drive to Chattanooga for church. Um, so I was using my GPS to get home. And so it took me the back roads, I guess the interstate was all backed up. And so I saw one of the sisters that I was studying the Bible with and her van was on the side of the road. And so me, I mean, we weren't really close yet, um, but I did have her number because I, you know, we did study the Bible a few times. And so I called her, I'm like, hey, are you okay? I saw your van parked on the side of the road. When I went around, she was no longer in her van. And she said, oh, it's the, my daughters forgot to pump gas. So we stopped, but her husband was there. And so since that, that day, um, I think we, she called me the next day and she's like, hey, you, you wanna study the Bible? And I was like, oh yes, of course. And I felt more prepared, I felt, better about myself and more confident 
in myself. So we studied the Bible for months and months and months. And then she's like, what are you waiting for? And I'm like, I truly don't know. And she's like, if you're waiting to become perfect, you know, you're never going to get baptized. So, you know, I, I was committed to God. I was doing my quiet times. I was uh, consistent with everything. And I'm like, I'm already doing what God wants me to do, you know? Um, so I'm like, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to make, you know, use his Lord. And so, um, I got baptized. Um, so, so that's, you know, how I became a disciple. And so, um, my daughter does live with me. She's not a disciple yet. We do. Um, she's only 11. Um, we, we do pray together every day. Um, sometimes she does join me, um, when we go hiking or if we do it Saturday, Sunday mornings, a quiet time, she does join me. Um, and I think my daughter is just so smart, caring. She's an amazing dancer and you know she gives me a lot of grace and forgiveness you know being a single parent is is very hard um but you know there's just amazing things that comes from being you know a parent like you know snuggling um you watch them grow you know the creation that you made you're watching them grow um you create traditions with them you know you help them get closer to god just bonding with them and truly you know, for me, like giving her the love that I never had. Um, and of course, you know, with, with, you know, the pros, it, there is some cons, you know, that challenges that come to being a single parent, um, you know, well, for me, everything is challenging and hard, uh, being a single parent, like making God first, you know, um, staying healthy, going to the gym, eating healthy, um, working full time, disciplining them, and you know, working full time. Um, but I think ultimately, you know, we have to trust in God and know that God's going to help us through this. And you know, I am truly blessed to say that you know, the disciples at my church, and I noticed this when we went camping a few weeks ago, that um. My daughter tends to be a little sassy sometimes, and she a little lazy sometimes too. She's an amazing child, though. Um, I did ask her to go get something for me, and she said, really, mom, or no, mom, or come on, mom. And then one of the, and actually several times during the camping trip, it's like a brother or a sister would be like, oh, yeah, please listen to your mom. And so I'm just so grateful for that that, you know, the brothers and sisters can step up and, you know, help you, you know, with that. And I, I truly, really appreciate that from them, because um, it does truly take a village um, to raise children. Um, and it's definitely, um, as a single parent, it's, it's kind of challenging, too, to stay focused on God and make God first. Um, I think just staying connected with brothers and sisters um, truly helps you, helps you. Um, when I find myself being impatient with my daughter, I just think of um, Ephesians 4.2, which, which, is, which says, Com be completely humble and gentle, be patient, uh, bearing one with one another in love. And I just uh, find that scripture um, amazing because, you know, we do need to be patient and gentle with our kids. Um, like when we find ourselves raising our voice, you know, it's like, I told you a thousand times to pick up those shoes. It's like, you know, let me do this in a gentle way, you know, so she understands. Um, and then, you know, when we find ourselves, you know, we only have that one income coming in rather than two incomes, you know, um, and we, I find myself struggling to make ends meet, you know, I go to Philippians 4, 6, you know, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with things can present your request to God. Um, so I find that scripture amazing that I go, go to actually for many things, not just when I find myself um, struggling for that. And then when I'm just so mentally tired and exhausted of being a parent, working full time, trying to eat healthy, trying to go to the gym, trying to make um, all my community groups that I go to. Um, it's amazing to do all those things. But as we know, you know, we're just one person. And then when something throws that off, like something in that schedule doesn't go right, it's like, oh my goodness, I'm just so exhausted. So I like to remember Matthew 11, 28. 
which says, you know, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Um, so those are the scriptures that I go to. I do truly have a lot of scriptures that I read every morning at work, before work, um, just because they help me, help me not only being a single parent, but being a loving person to everybody. Um, and then, um, let's see. And, you know, how I help my, my daughter uh, see and know God, I think it, I think they see it um, in our actions, um, not only just studying the Bible with them or, you know, helping them and correcting them, disciplining them, um, and just the way we trust God, they see that, the way we treat people, you know, they, that's how we can, I feel like we can help our children see and know God. Um, besides the scriptures and a lot of prayer. I mean, me and my daughter, you know, she hates it now that she's, I guess, a preteen when we, when she acts up and I'm like, well, let's pray. <laughs> and it's gotten to where she's like, no, I don't want to pray. And so then, you know, I give her her space, but then, you know, at the end of the day, we talk about, we talk about it and we, we do end up praying about it. Um, um, and just things that, you know, other people um, can help us single parents, or for me, I speak for myself, or hopefully I can speak for everybody else, um, just helping us raise our kids and correcting our kids. I love um, when people correct my child in a godly way, um, and our church is pretty good on watching our children when we go on encouraging dates, or I've had a lot of sisters reach out to me and say, hey, you know, when life gets hard, you know, bring Aria over to my house and you can go hiking alone. You can, you know, bring her a weekend and you can go out alone. And so I'm grateful for that. And I hope um, that the other brothers and sisters and Darnells and um, and Jason goes to my church. So, um, so I'm sure he has the same, you know, privileges that I do. So, um, but yeah, that's just a little bit of, you know, my story and what I have to say. Thank you, Myra. You're welcome. Hey, everybody. My name is Jason Board, and I'm part of the C3 church here in Chattanooga. And, um, um, yeah, I became a single parent. I was uh, really young. I have two sons. I have a 13-year-old and a 10-year-old. And I, uh, my oldest son was born when I was 15. And I haven't, um, I've, I've actually haven't seen him in over 10 years. And I'm, uh, I'm working on getting back into his life. And that's a difficult process. But it's slow. This was all, um, also pre-disciple. I became a disciple April 2020. So that was... I was really wild for a long time there, just running out, running around being crazy. I was, uh, I was in and out of like juvie when I was young, and then jail, and then uh, prison once I got older. And it was just really bad. And um, yeah, but yeah, my youngest son's name, his is Tony. My oldest son, his name is John Anthony. And uh, like I said, my oldest son I haven't seen for a long time, but my youngest son, he stays here uh, at the apartment with me several days of the week, and um, they both have uh, separate mothers, and yeah, so his, uh, my youngest son's mom, she passed away in 2016, and I was already drinking really bad and doing a lot of other things at the time, so when she died, that just made things a lot worse. I ju it just escalated everything. Um, and yeah, but by the grace of God, I'm still alive and um, able to see my, uh, at least one of my sons for now. Hopefully one day it'll be both. And uh, hang on, I can actually show you on my youngest son. He's right here on the couch beside me. I mean, I don't know how to turn the camera around. Tony, come here. That's my youngest son. <laughs> it's playing video games right now but yeah it's um 
parenting is weird. Uh, not weird. Um, I've been learning a lot, a lot of patience. Uh, it's given me a lot of insight from like about my dad, because I used to complain about my dad a lot. And him and I, uh, we, we would always butt heads. And, um, but like being a dad now, I'm like, oh my goodness, I see why you were uh, irritated a lot because I was a hard kid to deal with. I'm like, I get it now. I didn't get it at the time, but I get it now. And like just everything I put my parents through, I'm like, oh man, I put y'all through a lot. I hope my kids are better than I was. Um, I don't think they could be much worse. So set the standard pretty low, but it's, um, it's, it's definitely been a journey. I'm, I'm somewhat new to being a disciple. Both of my parents were part of the ICOC for a while, but um, my dad goes to a different church now and my mom doesn't go to church anymore. But so I was raised somewhat in the church for a few years. But yeah, let me look at the rest of these questions. See if I miss anything. What's special about them? Oh, Tony is great. Um, I, I don't know a lot about my oldest son. I know that I, I've gotten in contact with his mom recently. She says he plays saxophone in band, which is really cool to me because I have no idea how to play a saxophone. I tried to play a trumpet one time and it's really hard to form your mouth to it. I didn't realize there was so much to it. So that's really cool. I think that's awesome that he does that. And he also plays soccer and is in weight training. So it sounds like he has a lot of discipline and just has a lot of things to keep him occupied. So I think that's great. And my youngest son, he is just hilarious and fun to be around. And it's, he's, they're both, they're both great. I'm sure the oldest one is great. I know the youngest one's great. Um, no, neither of them are disciples yet. As uh, far as I know, my oldest son isn't. Um, my youngest son, no, he's not yet. He's uh, Him and I read the Bible every night. We have like a comic book Bible. It's called the Action Bible. Because trying to read like the regular Bible can be very boring to a kid. So we have, a, we have the Action Bible and it's got pictures and stuff in it. And it's really fun. And I've actually been learning a lot from it too because it, it summarizes a lot. But it, it's just, I like it. He likes it. We like it. And yeah, some of the things I love, some of the challenges. I can, uh, a lot of times I feel like I'm not doing enough as a parent. Like, uh, I'm 29. I, uh, a lot of times I feel like Oh, I see a lot of like people younger than me it's that I feel like they're doing way better. Like they've graduated to college. They've like, they've, they own a house, they have kids. I'm like, man, y'all are doing great. And it makes me kind of, I think it's a comparison thing, which I need to like kind of get myself away from, but that's kind of a struggle for me. Like seeing how well other people are doing and then being like, man, I wish I hadn't messed up so much and done all my stuff. Cause I'd be able to be in a much better position. But I'm like, but I've also had people in the church tell me like how much like my experiences in life can be used to help other people who feel the same way. So I'm like, I guess there's some pros to it. Like there's pros and cons. So it's good to know it's not just cons. Um, what else? What else? One, two, three, three. Um, yeah, just to support a single parent. Um, I have, um, I live with um, five, or, or I'm sorry, four brothers here in Chattanooga, and they help me out a lot. Like, um, I was ben, ben just screamed from his room, but um, they they help me with a lot. Like just hanging out with Tony, they're uh, they're basically like his older brothers, so it's it's great to have him around so many guys because for a while there, I also wasn't involved in my youngest son's life. I was still in and out of jail and his grandma took custody after his mom died because she saw, she saw how just bad off I was. So she was like, I, 
she just that was best at the time so it's just good that he's got a lot of men around him now like a lot of good examples so there's that and yeah so that's all i've got though thank you jason Melinda, you're still muted. Okay, can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. Hi, Melinda. Hi, my name is Melinda Hart. And Melinda is a trigger word because that's what my late husband and my mom would say if they were upset, so I go as Mel. Um, I've been a disciple for 31 years. My daughters are now, this, in this year, they will be 33, 32, 29, and 28. Um, my, I got introduced to the church, ironically, through my late husband, who at the time was staying at home while me and my two daughters at the time, I would take them to different churches because I was trying to find a diverse church because I was a dorm mom at this university, which is an all black school. And there was so much, there was so much reverse racism dialogue that was going around that my kids, you know, could hear. And I was like, I've got to get my kids in a diverse church. Um, I had already got them in a diverse school, but I said, I've got to get them in a diverse church. Otherwise I'm gonna be breeding racism if I don't have them around people different than they are. And at the um, JC Penney's, I was trying on an outfit I had, I had ordered and it's always hard for me to find things to fit. And when I come back out, my late husband says, we're going to church with him. So he had got invited. He got to the church. He saw the brothers hugging on each other. And he said, if one of them touch me, they're gonna get hit. He absolutely hated it. I, on the other hand, loved it. I loved the diversity. I loved the, the, the how it was um, just as many men as women, young, old, dressed up, not dressed up. Um, whereas I was raised um, Baptist, which is basically 95% um, women and all old women. Um, and this was definitely different. And I, um, I have, um, um, my late husband and I, we were on the verge of getting a divorce at the time, um, but because he and I both um, in 1991 um, loved God more than we loved each other, we were able to survive one of, one of the most turbulent times for me at the time um, when we first got, became disciples because we had so much baggage that we brought into the relationship, I mean, into, um, into the kingdom. Uh, but I can say um, uh, my late husband, he passed in uh, uh, 20, I'm oh, sorry, he passed in, yes, in 2018, in October, it'll be four years in October, that he's, he's had his angel wings. And that's how I became a single parent. Um, my, it it's definitely has different uh, challenges as your kids are older. However, it doesn't matter how old they are, um, you still have all of the same, uh, have all of the same dreams and, and all of the things that you, you know, the worry about, you know, are, you know, do they have all their needs met? Um, and what you can do to make sure that that happens. But more importantly, when you talk about um, their needs met as far as spiritually, um, my late husband and I, we always made sure that the kids, they always knew that we were going to bend over backwards to make sure that we got to all of their, because all four of my daughters were in F, they were, they were in sports three to four sports a year. And one of them actually was an AAU was all year round. But we would go to every single event. But we did the exact same thing when it came to 
their church um, team camp, any kind of devos they had for the kids, we would do all kind of juggling to make sure that they got to those. They, our kids never got the idea that their sports and their regular school was more important than their, than all of their activities they had at, um, in church. Um, two of my middle daughters at one point were disciples. They became disciples as teenagers. When um, my late husband passed, both of them um, have not forgiven God for um, allowing their dad to not survive his cancer. Um, they had given my, my late husband um, two months, but he was able to survive almost three years. Um, but for my daughters, that wasn't acceptable, and they are still wrestling with that. Um, I want to um, said to just share as far as how what the, the the very thing that I do with my have am and will continue to do. Um, I just like to reflect on receiving God's daily guidance. If you take the words of daily. Um, and you take the D and you, um, I use that to express, decide to daily draw into a dialogue um, with his ever present, um, with an ever um, present approaching God. It's so, it's, it's literally, um, right now I'm, I'm joining in with the um, West Coast. They're doing the 40 days of prayer. So every morning we have to get up and before we go to the restroom is get on our knees and pray. And it's just making a decision that before I do anything, regardless of what other physical needs are, are pressed upon you when you first wake up, that you're going to stop and you're going to pray to God first. And we've got a list of, of, the, of impossible prayers that we're doing. But to just, um, that has been so impactful, um, just making that a priority before everything else to, to make that decision to do that. And if you take the A of daily, it's always. Not to make it a, um, a Sunday, Wednesday thing, but to every day be intentional um, in making sure that, um, my kids are seeing my example, which brings me to the I in daily for intentionally making sure that I'm imitating, um, I'm imitating what I want them to imitate. And that means that I'm gonna be searching God's word and everything that I do and everything that I'm not to do. And so that, because I know that my kids are going to be watching me and they're going to be imitating me in, imitating me and my um even when my kids were young it, you it was amazing it was almost scary when you see little kids the things they observe in you but i can tell you with my daughters now adults they don't that doesn't stop they still they will say things back to me that i've done and they will, um, my youngest one the other day actually said, well, mom's a Christian. So she would never intentionally, I, we had a scenario that happened that um, with my grandbaby's parent, grandparents um, on the other side of the father. And my daughter says, but mom's a Christian. So mom would never do anything to intentionally hurt anyone because I something that I did and said um, hurt this this my other um, grandkids grandmother and just to hear her say that it's like for her she knows there is a standard that she sees in me and that I've got to always be mindful of that even though they're older it's it they're doing the same and that brings me to um the L in daily for loving God who lovingly calls you into a championship um, companionship with him. 
I've got to, when we look at what love is, I have to look at what in my character prevents me from showing love. And mine has, and it was when my late husband was, when we first became disciples. I have a tendency to, instead of erasing record of wrong, I take the um, chalk and I trace over it. And I retrace it and I retrace it. So because I know that is my, that is my weakness of not, I've got to constantly make a deliberate, conscious, anxious effort to erase record of wrong. And that helps me when I put in perspective, okay, God forgave me. He does not put levels of sin that mine is, you know, less than the other person or sin that's against me. Um, so I've got to make a deliberate deliberate effort to not hold record of wrong over um, anyone who's wronged me over their head. And I know my kids will watch me. If I do anything differently, they will hold grudges. The, um, the why in um, daily is your children second, no matter what. They've got, and no matter what age they are, um, a scripture that I, scripture that I reflect on is Isaiah 44, 6. This is what the Lord says, Isaiah King, the Redeemer, the Lord Almighty, I am the first and I am the last. Um, apart from me, there is no God. And when I think of, of, of making sure that my daughters know that I love them, but I'm not gonna do anything um, that is gonna put them before God. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to read one other thing that I, that I thought was pretty impactful for me. Um, it says, it's such a good thing to know that your guidance is something I can pass along to friends who ask me for advice. Each person is so different. Each journey is unique, but your word offers principles that translate universally across time and culture. Personal, personalities and situations. It's not that a specific thing I did will work for someone else. Instead, it's the general approach to things, honesty, integrity, forgiveness, kindness, patience, et cetera, that works no matter what, where, and when. And the last thing I just wanted to <clears throat> mention, as I said, support for singles. This came about today. Um, I work at Verizon. I've worked for Verizon 18 years. And um, today, two parents called in, well, one was last night and one was today, called in wanting to um, temporarily suspend their kid's phone because their kid was like, well, I've got a lock on it. So, which, you know, I'm not letting you get a hold of my phone. And the one today, pretty much the same thing. They're like, I'm not letting you get my phone. And I just, for parents, I, I want to press upon them, you're paying the bill. Do not allow your, uh, your kids to set up their own Apple ID to, to um, you know, while they're in your home, to allow them to set up their own Apple ID so that you can't put um, resources like they have now that's called like smart family where you can control the contents that they that they they are exposed to um, and they live on that phone I mean they act like you're taking oxygen away from them if you take it from them so just just uh, uh, just something to press upon parents when you give them that phone make sure you set that that, that apple ID up so that you'll be able to continue to um, um, not have the control on their phone um, taken away from me. And that's all I have. Awesome. Thank you so much, Melinda. And thank you, um, 
also to Darnell, to Myra, and to Jason for sharing your story. And we just want to open it up for some questions and discussions. So we'll start to see if, if there are any of you who have any questions or comments that you'd like to share about what um, our brothers and sisters have shared here thus far. I can go first. Great. Go for it. Thank you, Darnell, Myra, Jason, Mel, for being so real, mm -hmm. for taking the time tonight to help those of us who aren't parents understand from each of you, your uh, background and currently, and for inspiring us. It, it inspires me. Mm -hmm. As uh, Mel mentioned, diversity, and I think Myra too, just hearing your different backgrounds and your life stages. Uh, but I also think about the Bible teaching us that one God, one spirit, one body unites us. So this is a question for uh, all four of you, uh, whoever wants to answer, uh, which is, what is it that, uh, if there's one thing you would like for us singles uh, who aren't parents, uh, single Christians, to know about you or your family, to help us to better build with you, help you, what would you like for us to know? Mm -hmm. I can go first. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. now. Okay. <clears throat> um, the thing that, uh, and of course, this season in my life, I've, I was with my uh, late husband for 35 years. So this being single thing, I, I just got to the, the first two years that I was a widow, I didn't go to a single singles function at my church because I didn't feel like I was a single. Um, it was kind of hard for me to even accept that. Um, but as a single, I am, as I, um, I'm part of the, the 40 plus, um, <clears throat> the 40 plus singles, um, ICLC 40 plus, where I go on these encouragement dates with brothers and I have another brother that I, um, I, I talk to a whole lot more frequently than the rest. And my daughters are having a real hard time <clears throat> with accepting any guy, um, even in, even just me talking to any other guy other than their father. So I guess I would want to, I guess, press upon <laughs> anyone else that's single, you know, how do you handle I guess those that have ended up in this situation because they're divorced or, um, you know, just how do you handle your kids um, not being receptive to you talking with someone other than their, their parent, their other parent? Hey, Mel. And actually, that is very normal. And um, I guess it almost comes natural to the kids. Because for me, Ari has never met her dad. Um, I've never dated anybody um, since I had my daughter. Um, but I think every time it came close to that, um, it's like she didn't want any part of it. Her attitude changed. Her attitude changed towards me in school, dance. It's almost like it was a negative thing for her. And I actually started seeing a counselor for my sister's death and a lot of, of other struggles that I've been um, handling um, with. And I happened to mention this to my counselor about my daughter um, and just how, you know, when she notices somebody um, has feelings for me or has shared them. Um, and she sees them getting closer to me, um, she tends to like push them away and be mean and a little bit disrespectful towards them. Um, and so she gave me some good advice. She said, you know, mommy's wants to really date. I'm not really sure. How old did you say your children were? 
they are still at the end of this year, they'll be 28, 29, 32, and 33. Oh, okay. So they're, they're a little bit older. So I'm not really sure if this will advice will work, but she said, you know, just kind of have a real talk with her, like sit down and talk to, to her and at, tell her, you know, mommy's ready to start meeting new people. And, you know, you're going to go to college, you know, I'm eventually going to be alone. Mommy wants to build a relationship with people. So, you know, when you do leave, you know, or even while you're still here, mommy will have that. Um, and just explain to her and be real that I do want to get married at some point in my life. Um, um, and just explain to her that, you know, I'm not dating yet, but I want to get to know people and stuff like that. And if she says, and ask them questions like, why she feels that way or what's causing it and you know you want mommy to be happy um I would want you to be happy and stuff like that and I think for me that truly helped and we me and my daughter had a one-on-one -on -one conversation and at first she was like um because I did ask her like my counselor said you know what kind of people do you want mommy today and of course psychologist or counselor said you know she's going to say probably nobody and mm -hmm. then you can explain to them further you know well you know I want your blessing but you know mommy wants to be happy and mommy's going to choose wisely on who you know she talks and gets to know with and she, my daughter like that advice worked for me big time because at first she did say you know I don't want you to date anybody and I'm like well we have to be realistic baby I want to be happy I want to get married and whatnot and it's almost like it was like a eye opener, you know, I want mom to be happy. So mm -hmm. that's a little bit that helped me, but um, I'm not sure since yours are a little bit older, but maybe having like a one-on-one -on -one talk with them and just about them being happy and their dad, you know, being in heaven and um, stuff like that, that might help. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, does anybody else want to respond to Tom's question about, you know, what's one thing you want us to know or do to support you as a single parent? Oh, I have one thing. I have one thing. Um, well, my church, um, C3, is doing a very good job at that. Like, you know, the um, whole, you know, disciplining, helping you discipline your children. But like, you know, like, and I think me and mom had this discussion last year. We're not really a discussion, like an email, I think, conversation about like when we plan single events um, or retreats to include options for single parents because you know it would be nice for us to be able to bring our kids um along when we have those retreats and just kind of like um either they can there's days where they can join us or you know they can be separated one days but I think that's something that I would love to see is you know more events that include you know single parents because I know camping trips like if it's like a camping trip like a retreat or something like that like I think we can make that happen Mm -hmm. Definitely can, Myra. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts? Well, I'd really like to flip the question for those of us on the on the call who are who are not single parents, um, and you know who are singles. I mean. Many of us, if not all of us, probably know single parents, um, whether they're in our church or in our family or in our neighborhoods. Um, we probably know someone who is a single mom or a single dad and, and maybe never even, you know, took a moment to think about what their situation might be like or, you know, uh, what support they might need. But I'd just like to hear from the rest of us, um, you know, given this conversation, you know, what are some things you see that you can do? You know, what do you have to offer, whether it's your time or resources or talent, skills, um, prayer, uh, whatever the case might be, uh, what is it that you have to offer that you could commit to offering to a single parent um, in your 
in your world? I can go. Go for it. Even though I don't particularly want to have my own children, I love children. <clears throat> and my favorite nonprofit to volunteer through is the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Memphis. And so, uh, yeah, I, I, it's awesome to be able to love the children of friends and others and then return those children back to their parent or the guardian. But um, I, in all seriousness, I do believe that uh, God's blessed me with a pleasant, warm, loving personality, and uh, I connect well with young people, and uh, I can be fun, I can discipline, as long as the parents allow me, not with a spanking, but uh, unless they want me to, I can use a spoon, but, uh, but really, to, to be a big brother, and uh, so, and I'm intentional, so I, I, Right now, we don't have anyone in, in the Memphis singles who have young children per se. So uh, we do have those who are more like uh, males, life stage and older children. And so building with them as 20 uh, something and things like that as well. But if it's young children, then picking them up, going, doing something fun and then definitely include God and spirituality. Uh, when it's it's natural and and help them to uh, to grow into that. I I'd like to chime in for this would be um, more for um, the ministries that have young children. Um, my late husband before um, he passed, he had made a promise to one of the married couples that we would come and watch their kids. I guess they were talking and it was clear that they weren't making time for themselves since the baby. So he had made a promise that we would go and watch their kids so they could have a night out. But that same thing can, uh, can, can be applied for a single uh, sister. Um, even if it's if, even if she doesn't have someone to you know a male counterpart to go on a date, if you, if you could like take time out to watch their child so they can go like get a pedicure or manicure or you know just to meet some me time without the kids, I think would be something that would be very helpful for single parents that have small children. That's absolutely right, Mel. Thank you for that um, suggestion that, you know, there are lots of opportunities to, you know, some, everybody needs a break every now and then, you know, uh, for, for their own self-care and, and just to be able to, you know, also take some time to be close to God, you know. I'll go. Um, I think, you know, having, I know a lot of you knew Emily and she was a foster mom. And being a foster parent comes with a whole new set of issues. And a lot of things you can't do, you can do. Um, sometimes it means you have to call the police. Sometimes it means you have to call an ambulance. I mean, it's just, it's all over the place. But I think one of the things I learned watching her was her patience. And I always said she needs to, we need to nominate her for sainthood. Um, but I also knew, I recognized when she was at the end of her patience. So I think being mindful um, of those who, who have children, especially young children. I mean, Mel, I know your kids are older and stuff, and but still you have your pressures too, you know, with being, uh, having adult children, but especially those with younger kids too. What can you do, even if it means getting your hands dirty? I can't tell you how many times I just wash dishes just because it's what I could do. I can't solve the problems, but I can I can wash the dishes. I can change the load in the laundry. I can do that. Um, and I think even, even praying, if your heart is not able to pick up on details, pray to see the details. Pray to see the details of... Um, you know, if you're at their home or if you're in a conversation, it, you know, pick it up and say, 
Because, you know, we all we can all say, would well, you need help with anything? I, I'm sorry, but probably a single parent's going to say, yeah, I'm good. Thanks. You know, <laughs> but there's going to be those people who are going to be like, don't know, really. How can I help you? How can I serve you? And be insistent. Don't just be superficial. Be real. And I think that's that's what single parents look for. And I think even just parents in general, they want that sincere person who's going to help them. And like everyone has said to let me take it out for ice cream or, you know, whatever. So, um, so yeah. And I mean, I've been around long enough. I know a few of you have been around a long time. It's encouraging when you see these children that you watched when they were two, three, and four years old and they're disciples and they marry disciples and they're having kids and they're raising their kids. You know, you, you you get to see that. You don't see that, you know, what, if you're a young Christian yet, but the longer you're in the kingdom, the more you see that. And that's just, it's just a fuel for your, for your passion for God. So that's all I got. I'm good. Yeah, I would like to say one thing in the sense of being single. Hello, single Hello. parents. Um, <laughs> like, you know, being single and i've been in the kingdom now for eight and a half years or so and stuff and like i had like no thoughts no comparisons in the sense of like like how much it just takes until it started was speaking it spoke about like to get it out there be genuine be um asking for um help in a sense and or to even know that um, you, you get you guys ultimately like I can think about it longer, but being oblivious to it, you just it, it's hard to come in, in a sense to really grasp the situation and stuff, and not really sure of how to how to be with them in in those situations, how how to help ultimately. Um, yeah, I was in the singles group for just a little while, going from campus. Campus, it's, a, it's its own deal in the first place. I'm sure there's single campus people as well, which wasn't talked about, wasn't dealt with and stuff. And I was part of a big group in Atlanta, North River. And yeah, we just, it was like no connection in the sense of understanding single parenthood and stuff and helping them out in those ways and and stuff and I, I'm just encouraged to see this group getting after this and stuff and talking about these certain um, struggles and stuff and um, to really see how we can grow in this all together and ultimately it was just a couple months ago I almost said a year but um, Jason hasn't been here that long but you know when he moved in Tony who that was He's getting us out off of our um, couches, um, out to play some football, out about and about. And so it's just been encouraging in that way. And just it's really been a light in that. And it's really uh, us. We, we can get out there and provide for the kids and like get up and do certain things to help out the singles. Uh, parents out there and yeah appreciate this time and you single parents and this connection we had today thanks ben um yeah i i completely agree it's it's so inspiring to hear from all of you about um your your stories and just how you are walk, walking with god and staying faithful and um and you know certainly enjoying being parents but also recognizing that it's challenging and, and that we, you know, you need to hold on to God and uh, rely on him in a lot of ways. And um, it's very encouraging and inspiring to see. And, and you've really helped me too, to see that there's more that we can do, certainly more that I can do to support um, single parents that I know of. Um, we only have one single parent in our ministry. It's a small ministry. And one of the things you've really made me think about it, especially you, Mel, and just in terms of a uh, older adult, um, what this one sister has a daughter who's about to go to college and a son who's going to be entering sixth grade. 
um, in the fall. And so very, very wide. Um, and, uh, you know, I think her, her big concern right now has to do with the campus student because we don't have a campus ministry here. Um, and, uh, you know, we have a couple of brothers who are on, you know, two different campuses and, and, you know, they're doing what they can to reach out. But um, this is one sister. One, no, actually, she's not a, she's not a disciple. So uh, one uh, young female and, you know, she, like every parent, she's wearing, you know, she's going to go off to college um luckily nearby but uh but still she's going off to college and what's going to happen to her you know and and so it just really um has made me think that wow i can i can be there i can go have lunch with her i can hang out with her and you know just kind of be an aunt uh to her um you know take her out to dinner hey campus kids always want to eat um and uh you know use that as you know, whatever way, but just to be another adult in her life that that she can um, reach out to and and feel supported by, as she's making this very big transition um, into a whole different place. So, um, just thinking very strategically about how you know God can use us in whatever ways we make ourselves available to support others and to love His family. Any other thoughts? I have one more thought and I'll <laughs> shut up after that. <laughs> I've had the privilege to be around a lot of children of disciples, uh, single parents and with both parents. And uh, it has built my faith in God to see uh, the parents love your children like you do. Just even tonight, hearing the challenges from when they were infant and were colic to the temptations that are out there now for them. And uh, definitely, we all go through our phases when maybe we can be more obedient. But every child that I've been around uh, in our fellowship of churches, I can see God working. And I, I really value and appreciate you, the parents, uh, for loving them, keeping them alive, and uh, helping them to make their own decision to follow God through your example, directly through the, your word. And uh, it, it builds my faith. So thank you. Amen. So um, one thing I'd like us to think about, and, and you may not have any ideas about this right now, but um, we can all um, be ambassadors on this issue. So, um, you know, sometimes, you know, if you're, um, you know, the single parent, you know, you're just doing your thing, right? I gotta, I, you know, I loved what you were saying, Myra, about I'm trying to do work full time, take care of a kid, go to the gym, get, be healthy myself. Oh, and stay close to God, <laughs> you know, not to mention, you know, you know, whatever community work I'm doing and whatever I'm doing in the church as well. Like it can be re a really full life, a uh, very busy life. And, um, and we all have that. But at the same time, I think those who parent have that added um, area of responsibility. And I wonder how we might think about just making sure that we're shining a light on that in our church family, in our church fellowship. So it's not just, you know, this conversation um, once this year in the singles devotional, but that, you know, we're, when we go back um, in whatever ways that we're engaging in our churches, we're remembering that um, we have parents and, uh, you know, I know we have a family's ministry um, in many churches, but, but really just honing in on the specific needs of single parents. And so I really encourage you to do that. Um, and I think help, even if you're not a single parent, you can do that, um, to raise, um, to lift up the needs and, and amplify their voices so that we can remember that, um, as disciples, our goal is to support each other to heaven, right? Whatever those um, issues and, and supports might need to be. And, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate your comment, Myra, about, you know, how can our singles events be more welcoming of parents and their children? 
Um, and that's something we'll definitely give um, some thought to so that we can be more inclusive. Um, and, and we'd love to meet your children and, and we want them to see that you are part of a family of God that loves them too. Any thoughts about that? Um, you know, just kind of how do we take this back to our, our church families and, and, and uh, elevate these issues? The only thing I would like to add to that is in Psalms 119, 105, it says, your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Just to be mindful of, you know, when we walk throughout the day, I mean, I really appreciate like what that, uh, the brother said, you don't even think about the things that single parents you know, the things they're struggling with and that kind of thing, but to be, um, you know, just really seeking out God's word for, so that you can be a light to those single parents, especially mm -hmm. with the ones that have little ones. Um, that's what I just wanted to add. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. My name is Brenda Craven, and it's nice to meet everyone. Nice to meet you, sister. And I just uh, been a disciple for two two months. I came a disciple March to A. So mm -hmm. I just barely been in, you know, became a disciple. And really, I have COVID right now. I really didn't want to talk because I'm all congested and stopped up. So, and we like, can hear the you more fine. I talk, okay. And it's weird because I'm so congested, just very bad. And I just enjoy listening to everyone. It's really giving me some encouragement and strengthening me because it ain't been a, a easy life journey with me being a single parent. I've been married twice. At one point in my life, I was a single parent. Mm -hmm. Both of my kids now. I don't know if you all know Taranika. Taranika is my oldest daughter. Maybe yes, Tom. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, Taranika and her husband Chris are disciples in our church in Memphis, along with Brenda. Mm -hmm. And at one point in my life, I was, I mean, I was a single parent there within my first marriage. And I had Taranika at an early age, barely getting out of high school. And, and it, it was difficult for me with her because on one side of the family, she was the only child. And they felt like, you know, I couldn't take care of her, you know, on her dad's side of the family. Where though the dad didn't want anything to do with this. He didn't want to have anything. You know, he wasn't prepared for a child. My parents didn't believe in no abortion or none of that. And I was young. You know, I wasn't ready, but my parents, they believe in you got pregnant with it, so you're going to have the kid. They didn't believe in none of that, no abortion. And, but her, her grandparents and my parents and my grandmother, I mean, they pretty much, I don't know, they pretty much just spoiled her because she was the only grandkid on her dad's side of the family. She was the only grandkid, on the great-grand, she was the only everything. And to me, I felt they didn't give me a chance to raise my child because I had moved to Texas with her. And, <coughs> excuse me, and they kept intervening, had my child so stressed out she didn't want to live in Texas. So that made me uh, miss out on parts of her life. Well, I said from the age of 13 until she, you know, she finished high school. You know, all I want to say that I work and I take care. I make sure they had a roof over their head. And I was, to me, I was a great parent. You know, it was just... Some of the stuff that I went through, you know, being a single parent, because the kids are grown now, but I just want the single to know that at one point in my life, I was a single parent. Yes. Thank you, Brenda. 
That's great. Um, I, Brenda said two things that I just would like to amplify a little bit and then we can wrap up, Tom. One is sure. that um, there's a lot of stigma sometimes attached to single parenthood and a lot of comparisons. I, I hear all parents, you know, share how sometimes they feel uh, very uncertain about, you know, their parenting and what, you know, what they're doing to their kids. Um, you hear even married couples talk about that, but um, but I think it's particularly uh, a challenge with single parents. You don't have anybody to balance ideas off of, you, you know, you're, you're doing a lot of this about on your own. And, and Jason mis mentioned some of that too. Um, and so we, we have a opportunity to really encourage and support and just help our, our single parent brothers and sisters know that, you know, you're not alone and you're, we're, on the, mm -hmm. we're on the right track and we can help you. Um, and, and just trying to reinforce that you're not doing a bad job as a parent. Um, the second thing that Brenda said that um, I, I, I think, and, and Meyer talk, touched on this as well, is sometimes what our children need may be beyond what the parent can offer and you need some additional support or resources um, to help them. Um, and, you know, Myra was saying about, you know, consulting a counselor, you know, I am myself, um, you know, uh, the child of a single mother who raised four children on her own. My father died when I was six um, and she had a, a serious mental illness and um, she raised us with this serious mental illness. We all went through that with her. Um, without any kind of counseling as a family to help support us or understand even, it took me becoming an adult before I get, could get to the point where I understood what was really going on with her and, and, um, and appreciate the strengths that she had, even in being able to raise us despite having such a severe mental illness. So sometimes parents need support um, and and being able to encourage and encourage them to, to access those additional resources um, would be uh, really beneficial as well. Um, but I just really want to take the time to thank again our single parents who, who stepped up to tell their story um, and encourage and inspire us. Thank you all so much for that. And um, I, I think Julie St. Peter is going to pray us out. And Julie, if you could pray for the parents and pray for their children as well, that would be on, that would be wonderful. Sure. Uh, Tom, do you want me to pray? Do you, oh, you Tom want to announcements. I'm sorry. Announcements. Yeah. No problem. No problem, Gloria. Yeah. Thank you, Julie. Yes. So our next devotional will be on Friday, June 10th, 7 p.m. Central Time on Zoom. We'll send out the Zoom link at closer to that date. The we talked about it. At the beginning, before the video started recording, World Discipleship Summit in Orlando, Florida, which is our fellowship of churches around the world, will be gathering over a week, broken up in two sections, Sunday, July 31st through Wednesday, August 3rd, the campus singles and leadership ministries will meet. This will be at the Orlando Convention Center, Orange County Convention Center. Then Thursday, August 4th through Sunday, August 7th, the Deaf, Family, Forever Faithful, and Spanish conferences will occur. So in-person registration is at that website address you see there on the slide. They will also have a virtual opportunity for you to attend, and you can register for that at that website address as well. So we hope that you can participate one way or the other. Also, this is not an official Mid-South Singles Ministry announcement per se, but I did want to announce that our sister, Imani Rima, who was in Nashville, part of the Greater Nashville Church for a long time, and recently moved to California. Uh, she is hosting again, uh, something that she is the originator of and with help from others, called the Soul Food Poetry Cafe event. And this will be 
the third annual one, all white edition, which means you wear white. And that's going to be on Saturday, May 28th at City Winery in Nashville. So spoken word featuring those three artists you see there. Doors open at 6 p.m. And the show starts at 8 p.m. So uh, I probably will be there. But uh, even if I'm not able to attend on that Saturday, May 28th, I'll be happy to help get tickets for folks because what the environment is, is a great venue with tables and food and spoken word entertainment that night. Uh, and so when you order your ticket, you pick a table. So if people want to go as a group, it'd be great to sit together. So my email address there on the slide is tomwong98 at yahoo.com. And uh, let me know if you'd like to go. Uh, I can help put together a table for everyone. And uh, I should make a decision pretty soon if I can go as well. So uh, that is that Saturday, May 28th. If you are going and you're from out of town and you'd like to stay over, and maybe go to church with the Greater Nashville Church on Sunday, please let me know. I can help uh, find housing for you as well if you need that. So those are my announcements. Any questions? Okay. Well, then I will now turn it over to Julie to close us out in prayer. So I'll just quickly share, um, I told Tom yesterday that today will probably be my last time with y'all because I'm moving back to Illinois. So I'll be back in Illinois next month. So I'll be closer to the family, closer to yeah. the crowd. So yeah, it's time. You know, mom's health Mom's health is not that great. So it's time to be closer. So I'm, I'll uh, be out of here for sure June 7th and hopefully up there in who knows how long it'll take for me to unpack because I really can't take a lot of time off from work. But um, grateful for Facebook and, and y'all and just uh, friendships and stuff. And we'll all stay in touch because one day we'll all be in heaven together. So Amen. let's go ahead and pray for our, our for the closing out here. Father, thank you so much, first of all, for the time that we could gather together. Thank you, Lord, for giving us technology that you created that allows us to uh, see one another, hear one another, Father. Father, we lift up to you the single parents in our fellowship, Father, whether they're on this call or people we know of. Father, even single parents who don't belong to our fellowship fellowship. Father, these are men and women who just need an extra dose of your strength and your faith and your joy and your love, Father, because they're doing life and parenting by themselves. Father, please open our eyes and our hearts and our spirits to ask the questions, uh, to offer to help, and, and not to take no for an answer, Father, that we are diligent in serving uh, these men and women that are part of our ministry. Thank you, Lord, for, the, for all who shared and had stories, Father. Your will is always perfect. And even though we don't always understand why things happen the way that we do, they do, we can be confident that you are in charge, that you have everything under control, and your plan is, is a sure one. Thank you again for this time that we could be together. Uh, Father, we lift this up to your holy name. Amen. Amen. Please be pray for uh, Julie and her family uh, as she moves back and, and for her, her mother's health to you be well well certainly miss you julie thank you so much for all you've given to the mid south sure i've i've loved it i have loved it so uh i'm sure hopefully we'll see you guys at uh the big conference in orlando if you're all there so i'll be there with emily but yeah so it's good i'm not looking forward to going back to the cold i'll tell you that right now so <laughs> like no 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 i want to stay warm <laughs> uh my hope is at one point i'll get to come back to nashville with how soon that will be nobody knows but yeah. yeah but you'll see my face again eventually so that's awesome absolutely mm -hmm. and uh, before we close out thank you gloria for leading us in planning tonight's devotional and thank you myra jason mel and darnell as well
and Brenda. Thank you, Tom. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank Y'all you. Y'all have Blair. a good night, a great Thank weekend. You. See Bye. you again soon. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.